In this video, we're gonna look at the best accessories you can buy to get the most out of your DJI Osmo Pocket. Hi, I'm Aaron Parecki. If you aren't familiar with the DJI Osmo Pocket, it's this little camera here. It shoots 4K stabilized video, but my favorite thing to do with it is to shoot moving time lapses. You can give it a start and end location, tell it how long you wanna shoot for, and then it will go and slowly pan and shoot a time lapse the whole time. I've been carrying this on all my trips with me, and I've been shooting time lapses out the hotel window or off of bridges. It's been really fun. Anyway, this is not a review video. Chances are, if you're watching this, you've already bought one, and now you're looking how to get the most out of it. So here are a few accessories I've used over the past year. I should also say this is not a sponsored video. I've actually bought all these products myself. And of course, I'll leave a link to all the products in the description below. So let's start with the official DJI accessories. This is the controller wheel. It gives you a physical dial to turn that controls the gimbal. It slips into the Osmo Pocket here, replacing the smartphone connector. It gives you a physical dial you can use to control the gimbal, both up, down, and side to side. It's a lot nicer than using the little on-screen control wheel, which is on the side and really hard to hit with your fingers. Okay, next up is the wireless base station. This little thing attaches to the bottom and basically it gives your Osmo Pocket the ability to communicate to a phone wirelessly. I definitely recommend this because it basically turns your phone into a giant screen for the gimbal. Once your phone connects, you can basically control the gimbal with this the same way you would if it were plugged in to the phone via the normal smartphone connector. This makes it a lot easier to see what's in focus and you can also tap the screen to move the head around. This will become even more important once you put this on a tripod, which is what we're gonna look at next. I will say that this little accessory is super light. It doesn't really feel like there's much in there. And I kind of wish they would have just included the wireless functionality in the Osmo Pocket in the first place. It doesn't feel like it would take that much to build this in, even if it was a half inch longer, it'd be totally worth it. You may have also noticed that this does not have a tripod screw on the bottom. So instead, if you want to attach this to a tripod, you need another accessory. And that is this little adapter. Basically, the wireless adapter slides in like this, and now you've got a tripod screw on the bottom, and your Wi-Fi adapter on the top. Now you can stick this together like this, and now you can attach this to a tripod. And because you've got the wireless adapter in there, you can actually put this far away and still control the gimbal from your phone. As far as tripods go, I really like this Manfrotto tabletop tripod. It's super compact, and the legs just kind of pop out like this, and then it can stand on a table or even on an uneven surface. Super compact, it is super strong. It's probably way overkill for the Osmo Pocket. It can actually hold a DSLR, a couple of pounds worth, no problem. But it does provide a stable mount for the Osmo Pocket, which is really helpful when you're shooting long moving time lapses where you don't wanna worry about the Osmo Pocket falling over in the wind. While we're talking about tripods, there's another option that I like here a lot. This is a super slim cage that fits right around the Osmo Pocket and adds a tripod screw on the bottom as well as on the side. The gimbal slides into the cage like this, clamps at the back, and now it's holding it super tight, adding a screw on the bottom and on the side. The only downside is it blocks where the wireless module will go, so you can't use it with the wireless module. But it does give you a super secure mounting option, so I like it anyway. And now when you attach this to a tripod, there is no way that's going anywhere. Now, of course, with this extra cage on, it no longer fits in the Osmo Pocket case. I really like this neoprene case from Mega Gear. The Osmo Pocket slips in here with the cage no problem. The default case acts also as a, as a lock for the gimbal head. If we can't use the normal case, we have to find a new lock for the gimbal head. And that is where this thing comes in. There's a couple of different styles, but I like this one the best. I tried the Polar Pro one, but it was kind of flimsy and I ended up actually having the head pop out when it was in my bag. So this one slips over the head like this and it actually works well with this little cage. It kind of pops in here latching so that it then can't move. And with this on here, now the head is safe. And of course, this all fits in the neoprene case as well. Okay, we're almost done. Next up is these little lens attachments. These are the Freewell brand ND filters and this one is a wide angle lens. So the ND filters will let you shoot in much brighter light than the camera can otherwise handle at a slow shutter speed. That lets you get nice fluid movement in your shots while still being exposed properly. The wide angle lens, of course, lets you get a much wider field of view. It's particularly useful when you're filming yourself. For example, here's what it looks like straight out of the Osmo Pocket with no attachments. And I'm holding it a little bit closer than arm's length. And now here is what it looks like with the wide angle lens attached. 
you can see it's quite a bit wider field of view. And I can now even hold this closer to my face if I want to. These lenses are magnetic, so they kind of just hang onto the lens when you set them there. You can leave the ND filters on and they won't interfere with the gimbal head movement. When the gimbal boots up, it does this little startup dance and the head moves around and you can see that the filter is small enough that it didn't interfere. But the wide angle lens is too big and it hits the bottom there, not letting the gimbal go all the way down, which confuses it during startup. So you actually have to turn the camera on first and then attach the wide angle lens after it's already on, which is a little bit annoying, but it's not the end of the world. The wide angle lens came with this little case, which has four slots, which also fit the other ND filters nicely. The last thing you're gonna need is a short USB cable. I don't like carrying a tangled mess of cables when I'm traveling, so I've got short cords for everything, which lets me charge it quickly from a battery or from a wall outlet. So how does this all pack up? Well, here's how I normally travel with all of this. I pack the camera in the cage, leaving the iPhone adapter on there and the gimbal cover. This fits nicely into the case. I carry the tripod loose like this because it just sort of slips into a side pocket of a bag or whatever. That leaves the rest of this. These all fit nicely into a little bag like this. Filters, base station, cable. You can even stick a little micro SD card adapter into the top sleeve if you need to. You may have noticed I don't have any audio accessories for the Osmo Pocket, and that is because I actually don't normally shoot video vlog style with the Osmo. Mainly I use it for time lapses. And if I do need to shoot video on it, the built-in microphone is okay. And if you really need better audio, you can always use an external recorder and sync it up later. Well, I hope this video has been helpful. If you're going to buy any of these accessories, please do use the links down in the description below. They are affiliate links and I get a little bit of money every time you buy something at no cost to you. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Me and my Oslo Pocket say goodbye.